untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black zombie tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And we've got a ton of new additions from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, starting out at 1 mana with the full playset of Champion of the Perished. A 1-1 one, one zombie, saying whenever another zombie enters a battlefield under our control, put a plus one plus one counter on a Champion of the Perished, a callback to Champion of the Perished, which has the same effect but with humans. Then at 2 mana, another new addition is Jadar Ghoulcaller of Nephalia, a 1-1 one, one legendary human wizard, so not a zombie himself, but at the beginning of our end step, if we control no creatures with Decayed, we get to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed that cannot block and will get sacrificed at the end of combat if it attacks, but a nice recursive way of making zombie tokens that also synergizes very nicely with Champion of the Perished as a way to make multiple zombies to put more counters on it. Then we also have two copies of Tainted Adversary, a 2-3 Mythic Rare Zombie with a Death Touch. As it enters a battlefield, we may pay two and a black any number of times, and when we pay this cost one or more times, put that many plus one counters on the adversary, and create twice that many 2-2 black zombie creature tokens with Decayed. So we can play this at two mana as a fine 2-3 Death Touch, or at five mana, in which case it's going to be a 3-4 Death Touch making two zombie tokens, or even at eight mana if we're really flooding out as a great top deck. And then we've got the full playset of Blade Stitch Scab, a zombie lord, a 2-3 giving other zombies we control plus 1 plus 0. Then at 4 mana we've got some of the usual suspects, although Eben Death Dracolich, a card we haven't really played with before, a card from Forgotten Realms, a 5-2 legendary zombie dragon with flash and flying, enters a battlefield tapped, and we may cast the Dracolich from our graveyard if a creature not named Dracolich died this turn, so another very synergistic card with Jadar, as we can just attack with a zombie token, have it sacrificed, and then replay our dragon from the graveyard. And then at 5 mana, another anthem effect for the deck comes with Narfi Betrayer King, the 4-3 legendary zombie wizard giving other snow and zombie creatures we control plus one plus one. And for triple snow, we can return Narfi from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So nice recursive threat. And then, of course, to support Narfi, we've got a bunch of Snowlands in the mana base, as well as two copies of Faceless Haven, which can turn into a 4-3 creature with Vigilance and all creature types, including Zombie, so also benefits from our various Anthem effects. And then, topping off our curve, we've got two copies of Blood on the Snow as a sweeper that can destroy creatures or planeswalkers, and then return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield with mana value X or less, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it, so we can often get back a nice 2 or 4 mana creature with it. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, cards we haven't covered yet. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Shambling Ghast, a 1-1 one -one that when it dies gives a creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn, or creates a treasure token. Then we've got two copies of Village Rite to sacrifice a creature and draw to, so nice with our Shambling Ghast. Although in this deck, more than in other treasure decks, we actually want to be attacking with our Shambling Ghast a decent amount of the time, since we can enhance it with our Scab, as well as with Narfi, so it's more important to keep that board presence as opposed to constantly sacrifice our own creatures, but it's still a decent combo with the Shambling Ghast, of course. And then Village Rite's also very nice with Jadar, as we can even sacrifice a zombie token with Decade after attacking with it, before it gets sacrificed. Might have to be in full control for that to work, but there's a tiny window where we can still make that happen. Then we've got two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a removal spell that can be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. Then at two mana, I've got the full playset of White from Forgotten Realms, a 3-2 zombie soldier that enters the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature dealt damage by White, this turn dies, so we get to create a 2-2 tapped black zombie creature token and exile that card. So an awesome two drop for the deck. Then at 4 mana we've got more snow-themed zombies with two copies of Draugr Necromancer, a 4-4 saying if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it instead, and we can cast those cards out of exile for as long as we control Necromancer, and we can use our snow mana to essentially fix our mana in case the exiled card has a mana cost that's not blue or black. 
Then we've got two copies of Crippling Fear, which is awesome in any tribal deck, as we get to choose a creature type, and creatures that aren't of the chosen type get minus three, minus three until end of turn, so it can sometimes be a one-sided sweeper. Now do keep in mind Jodar is not a zombie, so that will get swept up by the Crippling Fear, but it's usually not a disaster, and sometimes of course the opponent might have a few zombies themselves. And then we've already covered all the other cards in the deck, including our two copies of Faceless Haven, alongside 10 Snow-Covered Swamps, 4 Snow-Covered Islands, and two copies of Ice Tunnel, and then some additional blue-black dual lands with the blue-black pathway times 4, and two copies of Shipwreck Marsh. Important to have enough snow lands to enable our various snow synergies still. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, missing blue mana, but we've got a lot of castable spells here with turn one at Champion of the Perished. And then turn two, we get to the side, maybe kick things off with white. And there's our blue mana. Still better to play scam once we've already established a bit of a board with multiple zombies. One important thing to keep in mind about playing Jadar with a champion is that we don't get the plus one counter right away, we have to wait until our end step. So that might uh, make a difference in allowing an attack or not. So our opponent black-white with turn two Professor. So it could be a grindy snow control deck. Thirst could be a nice play next turn for now. I don't mind playing white. And then... Uh, I can either go Ska plus Thirst or Jadar plus Thirst next turn. We'll see if they want to use that Reduce to Memory. Just gonna be a Skullport Merchant for now. And they do still seem to have another play available. Could be their own Thirst. Opponent passes for now. So, what's the play here? If I play Scab, then uh, the White can also punch past the Merchants, and then Thirst killing the Professor means there's no trade for White. Although even if that trade happens, it's not a disaster, because then White gets replaced by a Zombie Token. Although it's still pretty mana-efficient to just kill the Professor here. It's mostly that a Planeswalker like Spider Queen could be problematic and Thirst is an answer to it. So we get to hit for 8. Field of Ruin doesn't have any targets and yeah, there's Spider Queen. Still have a reasonable board state to pressure the Spider Queen. Although, would be nice to play Adversary for 5 mana next turn. So for now, what does that mean for me? Send all 3 at Spider Queen, and then if they want to save her, they're gonna lose their spiders. And we get to make a zombie with white in the process. It's probably fine. Could also see them make some trades and give up the Spider Queen. Triple blocking the scab. Sure. Not, like not really what I expected here, but I'll take it. Play Jadar, and then next turn adversary with the three extra mana will put Three counters on the champion total, which seems worthwhile. Kaya can exile the champion, perhaps. I just want to get in, get out, and finish the job. But then we can finish off Kaya. It's the least. And a backup Jadar. Yeah, I mean, still just sending... Uh, my two creatures at Kaya. I'm not gonna get an extra decade zombie from Jadar since we're gonna get two from Adversary.
So we're starting to run out of action here. Needs one of our lords again to pump the team. Something like Narfi would be pretty strong, although could get exiled by reduced to memory. Don't even have a faceless haven. Although our opponent also missing the snow mana to activate it. Unable to use that field of ruin, which they may be counting on to make black mana at some point. So if we draw non-basic lands, we probably don't want to play it. Deadly Disputes. Okay. Opponent's digging. Still no snow land, although they revealed a sinkhole into another merchant, so one unknown in hand. Gotta feel pretty good about our spot. And there's Narfi over the top. Ask and you shall receive. Can smash. And we've got the snow lands to get Narfi back. So if I attack with everyone and they block Jadar, they would be pretty dead. Although it's not like the one damage makes a huge difference, so better be safe here in case they've got some interaction. So I can still make an extra decade zombie end of turn. Another deadly dispute perhaps. Opponent's just digging. Given their lack of snow mana, even a blood on the snow would only be able to get back a creature as opposed to a planeswalker, although we would rather avoid it. And then we've got Narfi to return from the graveyard. So we would still have a pretty efficient turn of Jadar, end of turn, get back Narfi in the event of a blood on the snow. It's going to be an eye twitch. Still one unknown card in hand. They can activate Faceless Haven now, so they've got two blockers. Still not enough to survive as Rapone goes for Fateful Absence on their own eye twitch to learn, make a clue token here. Can pass summoning, keep them alive. Doesn't seem like it. Looks like they might have misclicked, but I don't think it would have made a huge difference here. Alright, so close game against Ors of Control. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. It's a little bit land light, but village rights can maybe help us get to the six mana for blood on the snow eventually. Up against an aggressive goblins deck, so there is an argument for playing the uh, adversary here. Or I can play the next turn and keep up village rights in case I try and kill it. Problem is, white is not the best blocker in the face of Javelnir, although it would also leave behind a zombie token, so maybe it's fine. Yeah, I think we're going to be the control player in this matchup. Pass it back. And there's a bandit lord. So they can attack with first strike on the captain. Probably still fine to trade here, make a zombie token. Oh, 
And then I don't think I village rise just yet. So now if a uh, goblin dies, we can maybe play it with a necromancer. Just want to set up our defenses and avoid taking too much damage. A relic robber, also no good attacks. Okay. And we're just gonna pass here. At this point we're probably gonna start sandbagging our creatures to set a blood on the snow. And uh, to that end, could sacrifice my champion of the perished. I'm a little bit surprised it didn't just activate the Bandit Lord to kill it. Alright, is it time for Blood on the Snow? I think so. Okay, maybe attack first. Although then I might lose a Necromancer and be unable to put all ice counters on these. So let's Blood on the Snow get back Necromancer. And then all those creatures with ice counters on them can still be replayed next turn. So that's a pretty cool combo between the two cards. Robber. Attacks. So they're representing a 2 damage burn spell maybe. I think I gotta take it, because the upside of untapping with Necromancer is just so high. So I can play my own Relic Robber. Battle Cry Goblin Javelinier. Seems decent. Interestingly, this is a goblin, so it actually gets pumped by the uh, Bandit Lord, not that it gets to block. And we'll keep Javel near back in case we need an extra chum blocker. Not gonna get to use the activated abilities on these goblins, but that's okay. Those attack. Still don't really want to give up my Necromancer, but now if I double block a Relic Robber, they could just kill Battlecry Goblin. I guess that's okay. Force that uh, exchange to happen. And in the meantime, the Necromancer accumulates more Creatures in Exile. Alright, actually let the trade happen. Narfi's nice, although I'm kind of having fun with these goblins as opposed to the zombies. So let's go with Relic Robber. Plus Bandit Lords. An attack, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, so yeah, Necromancer plus Blood on the Snow, pretty awesome combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Shambling Ghast into maybe a Village Rites, or we can curve out 
into adversary. Um, now I'm kind of liking the uh, village rights line of play. And maybe wait until we can play this for five. Right, never mind. Change of plan once again. Once village rights and kill the aspirants before it gets a counter. And then probably fine to go adversary ghasts. And then hope to pick up more zombies and zombie lords. Crippling fear should be effective. Opponent foretells a card. Hmm. That could be a sweeper, or it could be an angel stack, and this is the uh, Starnheim Unleashed. I think I gotta hope it's uh, Starnheim Unleashed and not Doomscar, because I gotta add more to the board here. Three damage a turn is not gonna get there in time. And Thirst can take care of one angel. Oh, it's a Doom Scar. That's unfortunate. Usually not a card you see alongside Luminarch Aspirants. So now we gotta try and recover. Shadar, not a bad pickup. Skyclave Hierophants, we can take out. Picked up Whites, and then we can still play a Kicked Blood Chief's Thirst here. One has got the village rights, bring back aspirants. And I'm okay with the trade. So we're putting it on a black white clerics deck. Kaya. Plussing on Aspirants. Narfi's not bad. So, probably attack all on Kaya. So there's two replacement effects here. Pono still gets the Aspirin back, but uh, we also get the token from White. Because Kaya's also okay with the creature getting exiled. Double Aspirin. So we're getting close to a lethal Crippling Fear. In fact, uh, this would already be lethal if it weren't for the spirit token. Tainted adversary. So I think the plan is to wait to set up Crippling Fear next turn. And then for now... Maybe all at Kaya. Except for Jadar. Is that excessive? Opponent could have their own sweeper. Yeah, I'm a little bit short of killing them with Crippling Fear right now. I guess I could still attack with Jadar since we're not going to get a replacement Decade Zombie with the Adversary, and it's going to die to Crippling Fear next turn anyway. 
So maybe I don't need to send everyone at Kaya. Let's send Jadar at their face. And then three at Kaya. Narfi at their face as well. Sure. Alright, they had a Vanishing Verse, unfortunately. Still okay. So opponent wants to take out Jadar. And hopefully this is enough for a lethal crippling fear. Hmm, that might make it a little tricky. If they put the counter on Aura with Aspirants, it's safe from the minus three. But then they also wouldn't get the Spirit Token, so I guess it's fine. And Rikulich. Yeah, I think it's time for Crippling Fear. They get a Spirit Token and an Aspirant, so two blockers. Block, block. We can take out Kaya. Alternatively, I can play it slow and go with Dracolich and then next turn Crippling Fear, although they get to minus Kaya in the meantime. And then the Spirit Token would get to uh, block Dracolich anyway. So tricky spot. Maybe I send the two four-powered creatures at Kaya. Forcing them to go chump chump. Zombies at their face, leaving them at three. Hmm. Yeah, this Kaya's making me a little nervous. Alright, I think we gotta kill Kaya. Although, can I beat Aura plus Double Aspirant is a question. It's gonna be tough. Backup Kaya excelling Narfi. Yeah, not what we wanted to see. Necromancer. It's not bad. a decent counter to uh, Aura to an extent.
don't have any good attacks, so we'll just have to pass. And then our dragon can pressure Kaya. Don't worry, I got you. Cliff Weaver doesn't change that. It's gonna be a difficult race to win, but at least we don't have to worry about Kaya anymore. So if I block with my Death Toucher, they get uh, Harafan back, but at least the counters will be reset. Or they could sack Glyph Weaver, but then we get it with the Necromancer. That gets exiled. Getting kind of close to casting the uh, Deadly Vanity as well. And there's a Pyre of Heroes for the opponents. Necromancer certainly helps here, now that Kaya is gone. Gives us a nice exile effect. So if I can hold out one more turn on the Glyph Weaver, that might be worth it. Maybe it would have been worth it to activate Faceless Haven just so I can get back Draco Lich because a creature died. Yeah, that might have been a mistake. Although no attacks means it didn't matter, and there's a land. Choose Necromancer. And all those cards go to exile. And uh, sure, we'll attack. Well, that was quite a blowout. Now they probably have something to find to kill my Necromancer with the Pyre of Heroes. They do not. Okay. Then we're in business. So I've got plenty of snow mana here. Maybe wait on the uh, chaplain and play white. Start pumping Hierophant. So no Demon's Disciple for the opponent to search up by sacking Aspirant, which could have killed Necromancer. Well, this has been an awesome game of magic. Do we even have any uh, clerics to get back here by chance? No zombie clerics? Nope. Alright, still okay. Jadar's a wizard. Put 
could counter on Necromancer. Is your opponent not really using the Pyre of Heroes as much as in our deck that we featured the other day? Opponent is at 6, fractures their own Pyre of Heroes and packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hands could be okay against another creature deck with double crippling fear and some early pressure. I'll try it. Do need to pick up some lands, but we've got our first three turns planned out. Chaplain, so should be a good crippling fear matchup. And white exiling the disturbed creature also relevance. All right, double chaplain means they can double block. So, well, never mind. Now with Crippling Fear, we don't get the zombies. White needs to be dealing damage to their creature to get the zombie. But still a nice tempo play. Especially if they play Rally the Ranks. Alright, so we'll have to wait an extra turn. Think I wait on Jadar, because it's gonna get swept up by Crippling Fear if we name Zombie. Opponent also struggling with her mana, finds land 3. Hopefully a creature that dies to the minus 3 from Crippling Fear. Our portable hole is going to slow us down a little bit. Aggressive attack. Enjoying the dance. Alright, still nothing. I guess I could have chum blocked with Shambling Gas to make a treasure. We're getting to the point where it might be necessary. Veteran's fine. And that's fine too. Alright. At least this will be relatively effective. And we've got another one waiting in the wings. Adversary for two lifelink. Yeah, we can probably attack into it. With uh, white, at least. Phantom. So do we have lethal? Yeah, I think another Crippling Fear probably would have been game over, so a bit of an awkward game with mana problems on both sides, but Crippling Fear getting the job done. Alright, so we got to see our blue-black zombie deck in action, and we got to see some great games of magic going the distance, and some unexpected sequences, especially involving our Draugr Necromancer, which has been one of the standout cards 
Overall, the deck is by no means busted, it's a relatively fair deck, but it does have a good mix of early threats to apply pressure with, a little bit of removal for interaction, and then it does have a little bit of late game grindiness between the creature land, Narfi coming back, and then the value that you can accumulate with Draugr Necromancer, Blood on the Snow. So it does kind of cover all angles, even if it doesn't excel in any particular aspect. So pretty fun mid-rangey creature tribal deck. So yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for today's gameplay. If you're still here, you can always become a patron to vote on the next deck that gets featured on the channel. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.